Catholic Jones Choir for bringing us into God's presence. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you. Any announcements before we begin? I have one. We'll continue collecting out there for Super Soup. Soup. So, Super Resource, Equals Resource Center all month, rather than just quitting today, which is Super Bowl Sunday, this is our Super Month instead. So bring in some soup. Sign up for Easter flowers, um, priceless, and um, sign up cheater on the bulletin board. And they asked if I had been by the 23rd. So two weeks. Well, not going to be next week. And that's all next week. Just one announcement from me. Uh, it's taken a few days to find out where Marge and Herb are doing, what they're doing. And uh, I finally was able to find a neighbor at uh, their home. Uh, it's been a few days trying to find someone who I could talk to because I couldn't contact them. It turns out that Marge is in hospital. Uh, she's at CDH, um, sugar issues, and trying to, you know, she, I guess, passed out again. It's a real concern, you know, so uh, I visited her yesterday afternoon and we had a good time together. She's weak, but she's getting better and uh, we're not sure how, where, how it's going to go, but uh, she may be there for a few more days. Herb is in uh, a hotel in Lyle. Uh, I'm not even sure where. <laughs> Uh, but he's there, I think, um, because it's close to his physicians. So just pray for them, you know, as I try to understand what's going on here. They're just very, very private. And uh, I was saying to my wife this morning before she left for work, you know, when you have kids in the family, you tend to share, give and take, give and take. Uh, with them, it's been the two of them, and they, you know, I mean, Marge was telling me, you know, she's, he's been there every day with her and uh, they love each other deeply and <laughs> they don't see the need for any help kind of thing, you know. But we must just try to, uh, just try to push beyond that. They do need our care. They have told me, just so that you know, uh, they don't need food. They seem to be okay with that. So yeah, I'll keep you posted. I did get a, a new phone number for uh, Herb. He's changed his phone number. It was on the board there in the hospital. I got permission from uh, Marge if I could take it down. I'm not going to share it, but I did share it with Pastor Seraphim. Because I think Pastor Seraphim, John, and, and Connie might be probably the best couple or you know, best pastoral approach at this point. You know, I feel very limited in what I can to know them quite well in the last two years, but I think John and Connie can really help. And let's stand. Today is Transfiguration Sunday, and you know, Lent doesn't really begin with Fat or after Fat Dues, I think Lent begins after Transfiguration Sunday. So let's uh, acknowledge our baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light. Word of truth sweeping over the waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant, renew your creation, restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. 
time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen.
from the mountain top into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Reading from 2 Corinthians. Do 
even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. <laughs>
We will say together today the, the Apostles' Creed. So there's, there's a framework with which we all believe. But when it comes to certain doctrines, be it baptism, communion, moral issues, we all seem to say, this is the only way to look at it. And I suppose over many years, as a, just a believer and as a pastor, I've come to realize that when we submit ourselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, we accept the fact too that in His unity, remember John 15, that they may be as one, that in Christ's death and resurrection, His work and His person, Jesus allows us to have many interpretations of this Holy Scripture. I've come to accept that as my own sort of framework. And I come, I've had a lot of peace about that. You know, that there isn't one interpretation on many of these issues. Except one. Jesus Christ is Lord. That's it. And if Transfiguration Sunday is about that, His Lordship, then we allow for not only the diversity of inter biblical interpretation, but we allow for the diversity of cultures all around us. For God so loved the world that He gave His own begotten Son, that whosoever believes shall not perish, but have eternal life. You know, just interesting yesterday, I'll tell you this quickly because I found this very interesting. Uh, I was trying to find out where Herb and Marge were, and I came to this wonderful lady, neighbor, who's a Baptist. You see, there we go, I'm a Presbyterian or a Lutheran. <laughs> She quickly told me she's a Baptist, which is fine. But we had a wonderful discussion about the Lord's work. And we were discussing, for example, how, uh, as she was the one who told me where that knowledge was in hospital, we were just talking about, you know, she's been a believer for all these years, and we were just talking about how she told me about how her father uh, used to compare himself to Billy Graham and she's also a Wheaton grad, I guess, and everyone who went to school at Wheaton, you know, you sort of think of Billy Graham. But anyway, uh, we, we just got into this discussion that, that the father had to realize one day that his ministry is just whatever God's called him to do, that's what he needs to do. What God has called Billy Graham to do, Billy Graham must do it if he did do and then I read this little splurb here, which I thought was so helpful. I wish I had mentioned this one yesterday, because I think what we were saying together, this lady and myself, is summed up in this little statement here. The spotlight of Christian ministry is not the people who carry out the ministry, but on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's just acknowledging that Christ is Lord. There's not one interpretation these issues. My father was a Methodist minister. My uncle was a Baptist minister. And you won't believe the discussions and the, the, sometimes the arguments we had. You know, it was all in sort of good, good fun and all of that. But as I've grown in my faith, I've come to realize that to acknowledge Today's Transfiguration Sunday, and in it we recognize the authority of Christ over everything. Our political life, our church life, our life together as families. We acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And as we go into this Lenten season, by the way, Lent is at 7 o'clock, uh, actually Wednesday, it's at 7 uh, on Wednesday. Um, you know, as we go into this Lenten season, it begins with the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord of our lives. And so we use this time to reflect, to pray, 
to sacrifice, to repent, prepare ourselves for Easter. So the Lord has been going to this Lenten time in the next few days, next few weeks. May it be a time when we start with the Lordship of Christ over our lives and what that begins to mean for us, whether it's sacrifice here, whether it's maybe doing something good here, not doing something that we know we shouldn't have done or we be doing. We allow the Holy Spirit to work through us because Jesus Christ is Lord. May God give us wisdom in just determining and reflecting on how to move forward in our lives this coming Lenten season.
Creed, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Son of the Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered by the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died in the first grave. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Amen. As we celebrate Christ, the body in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, on the world, and all of creation. We pray to the church that the transformational power of God enters the hearts of all people. May its leaders serve as examples of your grace and healing across time and space. God of grace, receive our prayer. We pray for the creation that we will humbly observe the swirl of wind and the heat of the bright sun. Teach us to honor all you have made and to care for the animals, plants, air, and bodies of water of this planet. God of grace, receive our prayer. We pray for those in charge of leadership, lawmaking, and governance of our towns, states, and countries, that they will strive for goodness and justice all the days of their lives and callings. God of grace, receive our prayer. We pray for any who are sick and suffering, especially those we name before you now, either silently or loud. Guide us to offer hospitality, shelter, friendship, and care to any in need. God of grace, receive our prayer. We pray for this congregation and its ministry in the wider community. May we share the transforming beauty and love of God in ways that honor the dignity of all whom we encounter. God of grace, receive our prayer. Intercessions from the congregation are now welcome. Lord, I give thanks to Pastor Robin, who makes such a great effort to visit the sick and those who can't get out. God of grace, receive our prayer. Yes, Lord, I just want to thank you for the way in which you have molded me here in this congregation and for the way, just the delightful way that uh, Janine and I were able to spend time with uh, Sally Gregory. Let me just thank you for the marvelous way that we have worked in the lives of many saints in this place. And we thank you for Jim, who is now home, and we pray especially for Betty as she has to carry that responsibility. We give her your grace and encouragement and strength to do so. Uh, we pray also again, Lord, for her and Marge, that your grace may come upon them at this time. And just help them to know that we are here to be support and Jesus to them, as we heard the pastor say a few weeks ago. So thank you for all the saints that have gone before us here, this place. Thank you for those of us who are here. Continue to bless us and guide us and encourage one another through Christ our Lord. God of grace, receive our prayer. Pray for my sister-in-law, Carmela, mm. who is after her second round of chemotherapy. Pray that uh, you give my brother's family hope and courage in the days, weeks, months ahead. God of grace, receive our prayer. I thank you, Lord, for Bethany, our daughter, who is back at home with us after spending time in a Muslim community. Thank you, Lord, for the way that you taught her there. And uh, in spite of our reluctance to accept 
at uh, the place where she was in. We thank you for the marvelous way you worked through those Muslim ladies and helped to mold her, to help mature her. And so we thank you, Lord, that uh, this, that this work is still peace in our hope. We pray that you'll continue to just help us to be patient with one another and to support one another as we can. God of grace, we serve our prayer. Trusting that all the saints, prophets, and those who die in faith are held in your care. We remember in thanksgiving those who have died. Grant us your gift of salvation as we await your coming again in glory. God of grace, receive our prayer. Know that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. We offer these prayers in the silent prayers of our hearts. <coughs> in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give our thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right and our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom we shall, we shall make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the angels, the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and joy that they are ending here.
Give her of every gift. Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. God who claims you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.